What's up, y'all? It's your boy Tim Snow, Texas Prison Stories, right here. We're going to come at you, maybe do the first real episode. Just give you a little taste, man. I told you we want to do a bunch of interviews, and we got a lot of stuff lined up. This show is not about me, man. It really ain't. It ain't got nothing to do with Tim Snow. It's got to do with a bunch of my friends, a bunch of people I know, a bunch of people I just met, man. Some real crazy characters, some smart characters, some wild characters, some slick characters, and some real characters that changed their life, man. We're going to have a bunch of people on here. It's going to be a lot of fun, you know, but... I wanted to tell you a little bit about Pam Lynchner State Jail, man, in Houston, because a lot of people ask about it, and a lot of your family and friends go there, man. It's, it's real easy to go there because it don't take too much. It's a little misdemeanor, uh, well, not misdemeanor, but real petty felonies, man. It don't take much, you know. It, it's a little wild ride down there. But uh, basically, Pam Lynchner State Jail and all state jails, you got Larry Gibson, and Beaumont, you got a bunch of them. They're pretty much like a baby TDC, man. You're going to go down there and... Get your number, you're going to get your head shaved, you're going to get your white clothes, you're going to walk in line, you're going to learn how to program, you know what I mean, to learn how to buck a program, you're going to want one or the other, man, and you're going to do a little bit of both, maybe, it's a trip. When you first uh, first get your little time, you sign the county, you know, it's, it's six months to two years, that's what you're going to do down there, there's no more than two, no less than six, zero parole, so that number the judge gives you, or the number you agree to, that's what you do day for day, man. You, you can mark them off if you want to. It's going to be exact. They ain't going to hold you too long and let you go too early. That's pretty much right on time. But anyway, they'll call you in the middle of the night from the county jail, tell you pack your stuff, man. You're on the chain, just like you're going to the penitentiary, man. Same process. You're going to pack your stuff. Uh, I'll probably already have it packed. Give all your stuff away. Go down there, get verified, stand in line all night, wait in them holding cells, do all that stuff. And when the sun comes up, man, you're going to get on that bus. And coming out of Houston, it's really not too far of a ride. You're going to go up to the north side up there. I think it's on uh, Tascacita Road. That's where it is. You're going to ride up there on the bus, man. They're going to shackle you down, chain, bus, bird, just like it's like the real deal. You know what I mean? Pull up to the back of the unit. When you pull up to the back of the unit, everybody gets off, man. You come through the back door, and you got to line up in the rows, and that's when everything starts. That's when you realize you're not in jail no more. You're somewhere a little bit more serious. Right then, everybody's got to strip butt naked. Uh, squat, cough, man, everything, grab your nuts, pick them up, got the cops looking. And what's crazy, man, the whole time I was there, and I was told it's almost always like this, the homosexual inmates find their way to the front, man. That's usually who's going to be picking up your clothes, and they're going to be looking at you, man. It's kind of like a uh, indoctrination in the prison, man. Welcome to prison. Here you go. You got some homosexuals already, man. It's a, it's a trip. You just can't let it bother you, man. You just got to say, yo, oh, do what you do, brother, and just keep pushing, man. It really just... It ain't got nothing to do with you, you know what I mean? And uh, they're going to get everybody a little uniform, hopefully your size, a little jumpsuit, and some shoes, man. And listen, honest to God, the time that I went, the only two pairs of shoes size that they had for everybody was size 7 men and size 15, man. You either had to wear a 7 or 15. And I had to get the 15. I'm like about 11 and a half, but there were guys, man, that wear 10, and they were wearing 15s, and there were guys with a... Uh, 10 wearing a 7, stuff like that, man. It was crazy that day. And they had to stay like that for a good while, too, man. Maybe get to the dorm. Hopefully got a homie that'll hook you up or something. But they didn't get no damn, man. But anyway, they cut your hair. You're going to sit there and talk to the gang officer. He's going to check your tattoo, see if you're banging, what set you claim, or who you with, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to determine something by that. If you're not with nobody, they're going to send you back out quick. And basically just waiting to be assigned that day, you know. And your first day, man, they're going to line y'all back up. And march y'all down the bowling alley. That's what they call it, man. State jails, two long rows of parallel buildings. And uh, you got a long strip in the middle, like a runway. And that's what everybody calls it. It's the bowling alley. At one end, you got the library and the schoolhouse. And in the middle, you got the control and all that type of stuff. But anyway, you're going to march out. Some of y'all going to walk right. Some of y'all going to walk left. As you're going, you're going to steady fall off into your dorms. You, hey, you going this one. You going that one. You going this one. I got the clipboard. You know what I mean? And as this is happening, everybody's excited, man, in the wings. They want to see who's coming, what's going on, what you about to do, who are you, what's up. They just looks like, it's for real, fresh meat, man. You're the fish, the fish food, and you're the fish, you know what I mean? But anyway, you fall up in there, man, they got, it's four dorms in each building, okay? And in the middle of it, you got a cockpit. The cockpit can see in a circle, and it can see all four dorms at the same time because they got glass walls. One wall in each dorm is glass facing the police. And that's how they watch you right there. They sit right there. And they got a tenant window, and you can't even tell if they're watching you or not. Cop could be in there passed out of sleep, man, or he could be with some binoculars. You don't know what the hell he's doing. And they got it like that on purpose. You know what I mean? But anyway, they pick you up. You go in your little dorm. 
soon as you go in your dorm, man, it just depends on what race you are or what happens. You know what I'm saying? If you're a white boy, man, the white boy's going to race you up so quick, man. They're going to not let nobody else get to you. And they're going to take you to the side. If you're a white boy, man, they're going to find out where you're from, what city you're from, what you're in there for, have you been down. If you've been to prison before, you get a little bit more respect in state jail. If you've never been anywhere, you get zero respect in there, man. It's crazy. You got to earn it. And you can take it, but you're going to have to get it, man. If you're a white boy, they're going to rush you up to the side, man, and take you to the wood pile over there. And pretty much every white boy that comes through, man, that same night, he's in the corner over there fighting about two or three white boys. You know what I'm saying? The wood pile going to check him, man. It's just it is what it is. If he don't fight, they're all going to stomp his ass out and put his mat over there by the door, man. He ain't going to stay. This is what it is. The Mexicans are going to pretty much do the same thing. In Pam Lynch State Jail, it's mostly all tangos, man. You stones in there. All the, all, all the Hispanic guys are mostly one click, man, because nobody else can make it. Them guys going to run your ass over up there, man. Anything that ain't Tongo Blast come through Hispanic, you got to go. Now, I do have a couple stories when a, a, some Mexican mafia come through and stuff like that. It was ugly, man. I'll talk about that later. But anyway, if you wanted them, that same night or the next day, they're going to be in the corner beating each other's ass, man. It's crazy. They're going to be doing that hard check shit. And they don't let nobody make it, man. Every Mexican come through, he's going to hard check and fight his homies and do it, man. And uh, if you're a blood or a crip, you come through, man, they don't really do too much of shit, man, because they're probably going to know you. You know, it's gonna, they're gonna, somebody on this fucking jail is going to know you. They're going to find out who you are. If you're legit, you're cool. If you're not, they're going to beat your ass and put that mat by the door. You know what I mean? They're going to find. They're going to do a little bit of investigating. Basically, they feel like a 30-second uh, fight when you first get here ain't good enough, man. We need to do a little bit more investigating about you. Anybody can fight because they're scared. You know what I mean? But we need to find out what you're doing in that world. And are you going to tell about on what we got going on and stuff like that here. But anyway, so it's, it's different, man. If you're a... Uh, Hispanic guy, you're not rolling with any click. You come in, set your mat down, and go to sleep, man. It's crazy. If you're a white boy, you got to go over there and do that. If you're an independent black man, nothing happens, man. Go set your mat down and chill. Go to sleep, man. It just depends on how you, how you come in representing yourself and what you claim on how it's going to happen, man. And that's just your very first day. And I swear to God, your entire time in there, you're going to see people's first days go like that, man. It, it turns into an entertainment, bro. Like, you, you hope a white boy rolls through the night so I can watch him whoop his other ass. Or hope a new Mexican comes through, man. He gets scared and runs off. It's weird. You're going to hope that type of shit happens just so you can see it, man. You know, it's it's wild. But anyway, pretty much what it is, man. Your next day or that morning, that's going to wake you up about 3 in the morning, man. Lights going to come on. It's breakfast time at 3 in the morning, dog. Everybody woken up half ass sleep trying to brush their teeth and watch, watch the sleep out their eyes. You know, walk down to the chow hall. Down the bowling alley, it take you about 10 goddamn minutes to get down there. Get down there. It's going to be the worst meal you ever had in your life, man. Everybody going to go back, go to sleep, be mad. Everybody wake up around 9 o'clock when the TV's on, man. And it's just a miserable-ass day. There's no air conditioner. There's no heater. There's no entertainment. Literally, you have one TV here and one TV over here, man, and locked in metal boxes. Those TVs cannot be changed. You do not have no remote control, and you can't hear them, man. You got two benches facing each one. So basically, you're sending all day in there, man, in a metal box with a bunch of aggravated-ass men, and there's nothing to do. You, you got no radios. There's no radios in state jail. There's nothing, man. You just got a TV that you can't hear. You got a Mexican TV and a black TV. There's no such thing as a white TV. They don't even try. You know what I mean? So it's kind of fucked up, man. The one in Houston right there, it was, it was, it was kind of okay because some of them guys, man, had a lot of pool. And there was a bunch of guys, actually, that had a lot of pool out of their neighborhoods, man. And some of the guards were from their neighborhoods. Like you have, might, have, you have, might have a guard out of Acres Homes, man. And here comes one of the OG big homies out of Acres Homes. And this guard lady has had a crush on him all her life. Well, you know, he's got it going on, man. Stuff like that. There was one out of Herschel Wood. There was a guard from Herschel Wood, man. I don't know. It's like she got a job just to work with them, man. It's the same jail that Zero was in. If y'all seen that, uh... The video, video, the jail so live, they let Zero shoot his video in there, man. And that was a real CO in the video. That CO was an African dude, man. He was one of the coolest ones on the on the whole little prison, man. And he would just never bother nobody, come change the channel for you all the time. Just stand under the TV, man. And back then, it was all about watching Street Flavor. Dog, let's just put this big meal together, chill and watch Street Flavor tonight. Let's don't have no problems, you know what I mean? But... See, the, the, the atmosphere about it is problems arise and you can't stop them, man, because you're right in this little environment, man. You might have two, three guys over here fighting and he got two, three friends over here running over there, man. This is a madhouse, man. You're trying to eat your fucking meal and shit's going up all around you, man. You just, 
the cops don't even care. They won't even. Oh, somebody's dying. They ain't coming in, man. You're 56 men in there doing what the hell you want to do. It's kind of crazy, you know. The way they have it set up, too, is there's zero privacy in state jail, man. That's what That is what will surprise people. If you go in state jail and take a shower, there's four of them. There's no shower curtains, man. Okay, no shower curtains. If you got to use the restroom, you got to take a number two. There's no stalls, man. You're going to do it right in front of the guys taking a shower and right next to the guys brushing their teeth, man. You're literally shoulder to shoulder in here taking a shit, man. Like, hey, bro, what's up, homie? You know, blah, blah, blah. If I lean this way and he leans that way wiping my ass, I touch him, man. And that ain't, that's not cool. Everybody got to lean right, baby. Everybody got to lean left. Let's get this understood. You know what I mean? It's, it's bullshit like that, man, for real. And then, listen, you'll be... You'll be watching TV, man. Just stand on mind your fucking business. Turn around and catch a glimpse out the shower when some motherfuckers in there jacking off, dog. Masturbating. And you even got burnt up, man. And you do not appreciate that type of shit. You don't want to see that, man. You're a damn man. And it happens all the time. You know, uh, probably one of the worst incidents we ever had in there was a man masturbating during the fucking Super Bowl, man. The dude was in the masturbating in the Super Bowl. We're all trying to watch the Super Bowl. We got the Mexican TV on the Super Bowl. You got the black TV on the Super Bowl, man. Everybody's having a good time gambling, eating, man. We're smoking, acting like we're in the free world. All of a sudden, boop, switches, turn the fuck off, TV's off, man. Everybody's panicking, like, what the fuck, man? We gambling on this bitch? This is the Super Bowl? What's going on? And the goddamn guard lady comes beating on the fucking window and pointed at the shower and said, that dirty motherfucker in there, tell him stop that shit if y'all want to watch TV. And, oh, man, they... 55 men turned around to see what the fuck she was talking about. There was one boy in there. He was maybe about 20 years old, man. And that bitch jacking off on this lady while everybody wasn't paying attention. He was like trying to wave at her and get her fucking attention and shit, she said, man. So she turned the TV off, put 55 men on his ass. Hey, that dude, they basically just railroaded his ass. I didn't even take part in that, man. It was just pointless. But the guys that were kind of, some of the guys that got bullied themselves took joy in getting railroad people. You know what I mean? Because that was the only time they took their frustration out, but... That's pretty much what happened, man. They beat that motherfucker on out. He was a blood, too. The bloods beat his ass first, man. And they said, y'all can have him. They gave him to the Mexicans. Said, we don't want him, man. You fucking up the Super Bowl. You get your life took in any facility. That's just crazy as hell, man. But guess he didn't know that was going to happen. You know what I mean? But um, I don't know. I want to talk about the food in state jail, man. If you got anybody that's in the state jail, I'm going to send them some money, man. They need some help. Listen, the food, you're going to eat pork in there about five, six, seven days a week, man. It's going to be like pork patties, pork loaf, pork noodles, pork soup, man, pork tacos, pork nachos, pork, man, pork everything, man. They, it, they get the pork from the TDC farms where they have the pigs and stuff, so it's free, man. And it's terrible for you. You're going you're gonna to leave state jail with cholesterol through the roof, you know what I mean? And see, Pam Lindstrom was fucked up because it was almost never wreck over there, man. They had nice recreation yards with, uh weights and everything out there you know what i mean my first week out there i had a fight on that recreation yard out there i'll tell y'all about that later too but it was pretty cool man they had a weight stack out there with the multi scene had a you know had, had a goals on each end everybody hooping man and had the fences lined down you could talk to your homies on the next wing over there like that on the next building we could talk sign language all the way down to prison it was pretty cool man you drop one little note go to wreck and shoot it down the whole prison and that's why they didn't like us doing it, it was just too much going on man and they just couldn't, they couldn't stop it. But it was pretty. You out on the wreck yard, you might see two deers out there just chilling, man. You know what I'm saying? It was pretty nice and relaxing. You just never got to see it. But it's time you're going to spend in there about 120 degrees inside. No fans, no nothing, man. Everybody's laying on the ground, pouring water on themselves and shit. It's miserable, man. That's why it's fight season in there. You're hot. You're hungry. You're unhappy, man. Around a bunch of motherfuckers that stink. Bad breath. All this stupid shit going on, man. It's kind of, it's kind of fucked up, you know, but... Uh, like the gang situation in there, it's, 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 uh, in Pam Lynchon State Jail, you're basically gonna see Bloods, Crips, BDs, GDs, and Tongo Blast, man, that's about the only thing that's really gonna survive up there, you'll see some Lone Rangers, man, that they ain't got no enemies or nothing, they, they can get it by, you know what I mean, some of them will just sneak by, don't say shit, but, honest to God, uh, Tongo Blast, man, I, I ain't gonna give them, I ain't gonna take nothing from them. They got the motherfucking prison over there, man. They got the state jail right now because there's too many of them, man. See, they got it so good right now. They got rappers out here representing for them, man. They got people uh, making a bunch of money, a bunch of people representing that shit. They got young kids out here just hoping to go to jail just so they can join, man. It's a lot of difference, you know. And you got these bloods and crips coming there. They don't even hardly like each other, man. They got to link up to try to make a little move or something like that. GDs, BDs. 
And Pam Lincoln State Jail, the BDs and GDs are pretty strong too, man, because they're gonna come out of Southwest Houston over there. And they stick tight, man. They're real clicked up. And they got a couple of them from the north and stuff like that, you know. Bunch of Crips, man. You're gonna see a bunch of uh, five dudes from Herschelwood, bunch of uh, five dudes from uh, South Park, bunch of Bloods from South Park, Rolling 60s from City Gas, man. Uh, bunch of Bloods from all over. Man, it's a bunch of stuff all over the town. Baytown. Got a bunch of five deuces, got a couple five nine hoovers and shit like Oman does, you know what I mean? You'll see a lot up there, man, and it's pretty much, there's no separation, man. You're going to be thrown in, you know what I mean? You'll be right next to your enemies, and there is no understanding at that motherfucker. That's what I'm saying. It's just crazy, man. There's no politics. Like how prison politics go in a real joint in the feds, you can fix problems, you can stop shit. State jail ain't like that, bro. You're only there for six months to two years. Whoever got the keys to the yard probably just got him. He don't know what the fuck's going on either, man. It's, it's a madhouse, man. I'll tell you what. Nothing like that fucking Texas State Jail, man. And I'm going to go into a little more stories and some more stuff like how when I first got there, they sent me a letter and say, hey, you got to go to the yard and go get it on. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that crazy stuff happened, man. But uh, we'll get more into it, man. Texas prison stories. Y'all like and subscribe, man.